And this is exactly why we want an air assist. Now air assist is probably one of the best upgrades you can do on one of these diode lasers. I tell you what, it makes a huge difference. And we're gonna show you how to install it today. Now I'm gonna be using the air assist kit from King Gubby Designs. Now you saw me do a video on this mount, on these tensioners, and on the feet in this video right here. So you can go back and check that out if you want to. Now that I'm using the Ortur Laser Master 2, this is not the Pro, this is the Ortur Laser Master 2. So if you have one of these, you can actually do this pretty dang easily. This also works on the Laser Master 2 Pro, but you have to order the kit for that, not for this one. Now they could be similar or the same kit, but I don't wanna say that, so go check them out kinggubbydesigns.com that'll take you to their page. Right now, I believe they're operating out of Etsy, but I think they're gonna be shifting over to uh, a website or something like that going forward. Full disclaimer, they did send me the Air Assist setup and I'm gonna be using that. Now, they did include this really cool little note. It says, wow, if I could hold on to it. Yo, Jim, thanks for being rad. Let us know if you have any questions. Brett at King Gubby. Bam. So thank you so much, Brett. I really appreciate that. The install is super, super simple. A matter of fact, it would probably take you five minutes or less to actually do this install. But I think we should jump right into the install. Let's do it. So with the laser unplugged and not plugged into the USB as well, we need to spin this thing around. So I like to put mine in about the center of the build area there and just spin it around just like this. We're actually gonna be working right under here and it's not gonna take long at all. This is behind the laser and this is where we're gonna mount our bracket too. So we just grab one of the brackets that comes, two of the little screws here, and it's pretty easy. We're just going to push that up there and then screw it into the screw holes right in the back of the laser module. In order to do that, I grabbed my TH3D toolkit. I'll link it in the description below. We will push it up behind. It's kind of hard to do on camera. Got to get it into one of those holes. Now I like this tool kit because it has a very long flexible extension here. I'll push up the other side, we'll get the hole started here, and we'll get that screwed in. Get both of these uh, screws tight and then we'll move on to the next step. I just wanted to say quick, you don't want to go too tight because this is a printed piece, right? But uh, just tight enough. So I'd go just a tight and then like a quarter turn pass, that's it. I'm going to interrupt the installation real quick to tell you a little about things. Thangs is quickly becoming the biggest online 3D model community out there. It is awesome. You can jump on Thangs and pretty much find almost anything you're looking for with one single search. They have some awesome features such as the augmented reality that let you see your models in full life size or a little itty bitty using your mobile phone. So check that out. Thangs doesn't require anything special to upload. All you have to do is create the account. You can upload everything and most importantly, Everything on things that you find is free. Even the stuff from Chaos Cortex, some of our friends from the channel. So go check out things.com today. You definitely won't be disappointed. Now you can see from the front, our bracket is mounted right here. And the next thing we need to do is start clipping those little ball sections in to give us our air assist here. Now I'm gonna do mine on the right side over here. So now we're ready to start putting our little ball sections together. And that is these right here, these little Y sections with a ball. And I think uh, I'm gonna use like three sections. We're gonna try that. So I'm gonna use actually two connectors and then the nozzle itself. So this is what the nozzle looks like here. So what I'm gonna do is take and clip two of the ball sections together like that. So now we have two. I'm gonna clip the nozzle into it as well. So now we have two ball sections and the nozzle. Now this will all get clipped into or pushed into the bottom of this bracket. Now hold your laser nozzle, just push up and there you go. Now the idea is to get your nozzle about two to three millimeters away from whatever surface you're burning. And in this case, I'm actually not gonna get there. So I'm gonna have to add one more little link into this. Now I set my laser at the height it should be when I'm burning. So that's very important to make sure your laser is at the proper height. So right now I have the G8 lens in this. It's 75 millimeters from here to the desk and that's where I'm measuring here. So make sure your laser is set properly at the right height before you start pushing these together. Otherwise what could happen is you'll bring it down and it'll hit everything and you'll have to start over. So I didn't get enough little clips in. I'm gonna add one more 
And the idea is to get it at a 75 degree angle, two to three millimeters away from your surface. So we're pretty close there. Now, as you can see, they're very flexible, so you can move it around. If you wanna play with the angle or anything like that, go for it. Uh, that is totally okay. So what we're gonna do is take the next little piece that comes with it, and it's this one right here. Uh, this one right here is just gonna hold your tubing. So I think what we're gonna do with this one is push it in, we'll just get it in there. I believe I'm just gonna use it like that. So maybe my tubing will come in, it'll come down here, through here, and down into my nozzle. So the next step is to grab the tubing. Now I ordered this straight from them, and I suggest you guys do too. If not, they tell you what size you need, and I'll put that in the description below. Uh, but this is the tubing they send to me. There's a ton of it. So it's just silicone tube like that. What we're gonna do is kind of figure out where we're gonna mount this, pull it down. We're gonna push it through our mounting bracket here. And that one holds it so it doesn't go far. Then the next thing we need to do is push it into the back of the nozzle. Now this is going to be a tight fit and you wanna make sure there's no kinks so you might just wanna pull that nozzle off. So if you pull that off, it's a little easier to do. And you wanna push the tube right into the back of that nozzle right there where you can see the hole. Uh, when you get that done, we're gonna push this back onto here and then we're gonna position it so there's no kinks in your tube. And we'll do that now. So once you have it in the nozzle like this, clip it back in like we had it a little bit ago. And let's aim that thing down where it is supposed to go. Now you want to pull it back so there's no kink in this tube. You can It's hard to see on this, but um, if you're too far, there'll be a really big kink here. You don't want that. So pull it back. We're going to reroute this in our next step, but you want to make sure there's no kinks here. Now the next thing I want to do is run our tubing quick, and then we'll check everything with the laser and get this thing fired up. Okay, so now what we want to do is run our tubing so it doesn't get caught in everything. And there's a bunch of different schools of thought on this. Um, I prefer to run it right up the side of the laser like this. And I'm going to take some small zip ties that I have laying around and just go very loosely around the wire harness here in the top. So if you pull that and we're like this, and I want to go loose for now just in case we have to move it. So, and you also don't want to crimp these wires, so just be careful with that. So I'm gonna go right there just for now, and then I'm gonna take another one along the uh, wire loom. Now, there's many trains of thought on this. You can do this any way you want to. There you go. But if you have a better way, go for it. It's, this isn't like a concrete thing you have to do or anything like that. So right now we're just kind of loose in case we need to move it. And what you want to do on the very end here is go wherever your pump is going to be. So they give you quite a bit of tubing here. I mean, there's a lot left here. My pump is going to be out the back when we get it in the enclosure. But right now I'm not in the enclosure, so I'm actually going to leave it off to the side currently. What we need to do now is connect it to a pump, put something down and fire up a laser. So let's connect it to the pump quick. So I grabbed this 32 watt Vivo Sun Air Pump from Amazon. I'll put it in the link below. I'll put a link in the description below how to buy this. It's about $48 right now, but it's 32 watts. It puts out 950 gallons per hour. And if you have multiple lasers, you could actually run this right here, which gives you, I believe, six different uh, outlets. Now, you could turn them all off and just use one, and you can actually use this to control how much air you're getting if you really want to. But what we're gonna do is plug straight into this and keep it full open for now. Now there might be some projects where you wanna close this off a little bit, give it a little less air. Uh, you could unplug it and have no air because this doesn't have a switch. It's either plugged in and on or unplugged and off. A lot of people actually will just bypass this and go straight into here to get the maximum amount of air possible and that's fine too. But for this demonstration, I'm gonna use it as it came like this right here. So grab the end of your silicone hose, wherever this is going to be. You might want to lick your finger a little bit and moisten the end of that because the silicone gets kind of dry and hard to slide on. Once you do that, it's pretty easy. There you go. You just slide your silicone onto the end of that tube right there and you're good to go. Now what we need to do is check out the laser. Let's see our distance and let's make sure we got some good air going. So I have my laser plugged in right now. It's connected to light burn. I go to the move tab, I turn it to 25% on the fire button, 
and I hit that. Now we can see right there, I won't put my finger in it, but you can see right there that it's showing the dot where the laser is. Uh, at 25%, it's very low power. You always want to wear your glasses if you're gonna do this. I do suggest that you probably turn up your power if you have good glasses, that way you can see this. But we're gonna take the nozzle, we're gonna adjust it somewhere at about a 45 degree angle. So it's just a little bit outside. And you can see the benefit of having these little adjustable uh, links here, is you can really move that around. Now I did kink this, so now we have to unkink it. So what I'm gonna do is play with this till I get a good angle about uh, close to 45 degrees or, or close. Uh, not kinked tube and you're blowing almost directly on that dot without hitting that dot You don't want the dot to hit the print there All right, so I played with it a lot and I got it about exactly where I want it uh, So let's fire up the dot here as you can see the dot is right here and the nozzle is blowing directly on it right there now what we would do is fire up the pump and give this thing a test, but first I want to show you exactly what this does so what I did was I took a glass of water, I put it under the laser, and it's just about the right height where it would be uh, actually on something I'm burning. I'm gonna plug in the air pump and we're gonna see how much water it actually dissipates. And we're gonna show you why we want an air assist on lasers to help blow that soot and debris out while you're lasering to keep your lines clean. And this is exactly why we want an air assist. It helps keep the debris and everything out of your burn path. It keeps it clean and keeps your lines cleaner and everything much smoother. This just shows that this air assist by King Gubby Designs works very, very well. You can actually see how much air it's pushing through with that 32 watt air pump I got. It's doing an awesome job. You can see how much into the water it's going and, and when we get lasering, I can't wait to see what this thing does. So you just saw the install of the Air Assist on the Laser Master 2 by Ortur. I'm using the King Gubby Designs Air Assist. Now there is many different thoughts on Air Assist and you can use whatever one you want. Uh, there's some that go straight through the nozzle. There's some like this where that do not go straight through the nozzle. I think either way you're gonna have a great result and I don't wanna dispute or argue that in this video. All this video is to do is show you how to install it and how to use it. But before we go any further, I wanna show you before and after with Air Assist and without using the Ortur Laser Master 2 as shown like this on this board right here. So if we take a look at the burn we did without the Air Assist here, you can see it's not bad. Uh, I can see that the laser is probably moving around a little bit on my desk here, but uh, usually it's in the enclosure locked down with those awesome feet by King Gubby Designs as well. Uh, but you can see right here, it's not, it's not terrible. It's kind of fuzzy, um, but it, it's not bad. Now, if we spin this around, now you can see the one with the air assist. Now there's several trains of thought on if you should use air assist while etching. I just did a fill, so it's not really an etch, but it is. But you can see it's much, much cleaner here. Uh, the lines are cleaner. The burn is actually deeper. Everything looks just generally nicer on this one. If we put them next to each other, you can kind of see here, this is kind of fuzzy. This one's not so much. But I think the clear winner here is with air assist on in this case. So you just saw the before and after, and I think the after was actually a lot better. Now there's a lot of people out there that tell you that you don't use air assist when you're etching, only when you're cutting, and that you do use air assist while you're etching. It depends really who you talk to. What I would say is test it yourself, see what you get the best results on. It's all about how your laser performs and you get the results that you want. Now historically you'd use air assist while you're cutting to get deeper passes and stuff like that, but in this case, I'd say test it. If you wanna use it while you're etching, do it. If you don't, that's okay too, as long as you're getting the results that you want from your laser. So in this video, I used this right here, the Vivo Sun 32 watt air pump, uh, 950 gallons per hour with a six outlet, a uh, little adapter here that you can turn off and on. You can actually slow down the air, you can speed it up, uh, basically put more or less air in, whatever you wanna do, or you can pull this whole apparatus off and plug the hose straight onto it, that's okay too however you want to use this. Now, if you had a farm, maybe you had a couple of them running, 
and you wanted to use multiple uh, air assist systems with one pump, you could definitely do that. Just use something like this to control them on and off. You can get this on Amazon. It's about 48 bucks, I believe, right now. And uh, it, it's actually been a very good air, little air pump. Something to note, if you're gonna use an air compressor or some sort of air system like that, put a moisture filter system on it. You don't want moisture running through your hose and blowing on whatever project you're burning. You wanna be careful with that. Uh, with an air pump like this, you don't have to use that. But if you're gonna use a compressor with an air tank, that kind of thing, they do store moisture. You wanna make sure you have that moisture filter on. So before we go, why would we want air assist? Well, as you saw, the air blows down on whatever material you're burning and clears out the soot the sp little pieces, whatever's in there that your laser is kicking up, it'll blow it out of the way. Now that's really good if you wanna cut wood or anything like that because it allows you to get a deeper cut into your wood because you're not going back over that soot, etc. The other reason why you want an air assist is to help prevent fire. So this is consistently blowing on that material and it's gonna blow out any flames that were to fire up. Uh, you see this a lot on CO2 lasers but it can happen on these lasers too. If you're going too slow, maybe you have your power too high, anything like that, it's a, a more flammable material, you'll see flare-ups, and this will definitely help prevent that flare-up. That's just a couple reasons why you'd want this, but I tell you what, you won't be disappointed, especially for the price that you can get it from King Gubby Designs. Uh, I really like this design. It's, it's modular, you can piece it together however you want, you can angle it to your liking, and there's more you can add on, and we're gonna see that in the next video, so stay tuned. So those are a couple reasons why I say you'd like the Air Assist. Let me know in the comments below why you think the Air Assist is great on these lasers. I'd love to hear your comments. Maybe it's something I didn't think about, or maybe it's something I'll do a video on in the future. But I hope you guys learned something today, and as always, keep burning.